Hello, welcome to my dispatch. New viewers, old viewers, um, viewers in the middle, like new viewers that maybe it was a couple months ago. So is that is that new? Yeah, probably that counts as new. So um, this is a Puro dispatch. The topic is going to be. I was talking to this guy about that 75-year-old guy that got pushed over by the cops in Buffalo. And, you know, he's a professional person. Um, has to be smart to do what he it does in some sense. But he was falling. I, I had happened to show him this, um, you know, I don't know, a couple hours after it went up. And so before it hit the press a lot. Um and it was in the press, of course, what I mean, it wasn't, it, you know, now it's saturated out there. Um, with the video, now, you know, he and these other people I showed it to, they thought that was terrible, but they were also like, geez, oh, why, why would a cop do that? Something weird. And just sort of prone to the counter information and you know he found something that had been already put together about to be in fake blood look it looks like a basketball you know pretending to have a foul kind of fall things like that and he said well i don't know but you know we just who knows what's real and the media and the information people lie so much and of course it's odd it's ironic even um because he's a certain kind of irony because, you know, he, he's deciding what to believe. And also because I myself, being a skeptic, a fan of skepticism uh, since my teen years, and um, maybe I was 20 when I actually found out what skepticism really was, but I'd already w been a fan of, of, you know, the philosophy and the way of looking at things. But skepticism isn't about doubt it's not nihilism it's you know skepticism means you can always learn more about a subject that doesn't mean you need to learn more it doesn't mean it's worth time learning more uh, maybe skeptics are prone to studying subjects well after there's any benefit other than the fact of you know it's a it's a hobby like building a train tracks uh you know yeah you can make it better and better and better but at a point it you know uh you know why is it worth your time and um you know, yeah, a person could decide what is uh, worth their own time. Um, uh, and when you do overstudy some area, you're just not studying some other area. So the fact of the matter is, it's just this idea of everything could use some rethinking, which is where the, the doubt comes in, because, of course, you know, uh, this is all coming up over a religious history and people don't like for the gods and whatnot to be rethought and uh, re, you know, calculated, or to have that done outside of a clergy, often at least in Christianity, and so um, you know it gets this reputation of, of doubt. And if you are dogmatic and have this concrete idea that oh, we used to know how things were and we used to know what was true or not, um, skepticism does tend to dissolve that and you'll get into this situation of you don't know what to think right you just don't know what to think and that's what supposedly happens in between eras you know the age of reason versus the age of this the age of that there's these reevaluation of values as people give up and they become personally travel through nihilism from their dogmatic certainty that all dissolves and they go through um, like a zero G spot, like they're falling through a planet, and often they shoot out exactly the other side. That's why you'll see, you know, your Marxist, your Antifa friend is now a proud boy, and you know, your Marxist friend is now a, also a proud boy. Um, I don't know what they would become, but um, there's often a similarity in the trajectory. It's just in the opposite direction, but in line kind of thing. But not necessarily. People can go into all kinds of new directions, because for one, that's just a metaphor. And two, there's ways to maneuver yourself uh, through that reevaluation of values that you've been thrust in because you've lost faith in the stuff where, you know, back when you knew exactly what was what. 
but you are actually uh, suffering from a dogmatic illusion and now you're at this nihilistic state with a certain kind of momentum and since it's hard to tell what's true and what's around you what's solid it's hard to even know what direction that's in so I mean in a way I'd always thought this would be a good thing everybody should go through this point but now it's it's difficult suffering a whole society going through it but um, there definitely is a way through and uh, I believe it's impossible to stop at nihilism um, you don't actually travel through actual nihilism the human mind is a, has certain ingrained biases and opinions and ways of looking at the universe and the world through the senses that, you know, it's not really nothingness to go back down to the basic human nature, but there's so much variability in people's psychology that, um, for all intents and purposes, it's nothingness in the sense that when you meditate and blank your mind or whatever, it's not actually blank. You're having brain waves, there's sensations and things, but you've calmed it down so much that, you know, for our purposes, uh, that is the blank slate version of the human mind, or in this case, of a political ideology or of an epistemology of how you gather facts and, and what you count as knowledge. Now, in the case of the 75-year-old man, it's like, yeah, I'm not assuming, and if I saw that video and I knew nothing about it, it could be staged, it could literally be part of a movie. But, we know the guy went to ICU, or at least the hospital says, that, you know, says we got him, at, the, the cops took him there, the cops looked at him, how could he have a blood pouch? Did I mention that the guy's theory was of a blood pouch? Yeah, I think I did. Uh, how could he, and it, don't you think the cops might, instead of firing those two cops, they might hold up the blood pouch? Or the Trump uh, with the the scanner idea? You know, it's it's obvious acts of desperation at that point. Um, usually it's, it's more subtle, but uh, in either case, it's the same thing. First of all, Go get primary information. Get as much primary information as you can. Witnesses and things. Yes, witnesses lie, but they're not that great at coordinating all their lies. Witnesses and lawyers and uh, coroners, they do lie, and they lie in particular directions. You can guess the directions a little bit by knowing the biases of, of a thing. Um, you know, in astronomy, you, you, you have the camera, and you want to get an image from the camera and you want to improve it, well, you can do things like you take a zero-second exposure. You take a long exposure, but with the cap on. You take an exposure of, you know, a blank white wall or whatever out of focus. And with those pictures, you know the bias, what, what the camera, what part of the picture the camera's making on its own. You can use that to, to crispen up an actual image. You take that actual image, you can take those biases out and I think a lot of us, you know, kind of try to do this, um, but probably not that great at it. But, you know, if you're getting the, the county coroner autopsy or some party in the legal dispute autopsy, or the, it's not that any of these are going to be totalized. They have a bias for them to be totalized is, you know rare and it only has things in it that can be double checked or else it's just hearsay and stuff anyway it's not actual evidence i don't mean every statement but i mean in the long run in the court it's going to break down to that so um you know the cops were right there there's no way he could get away with a scheme like that the the lies against you are not so coordinated that the cops that it was made to look bad are also in on it even though they're giving up their jobs, at least for a while, it doesn't. That doesn't make sense it, because it's not cohesive. So yeah, there's a lot of noise and lies out there, and you can go find memes about this or that. Of course you can, but you could cut through all that by going to get primary information and seeing which which way it points. And um, you know, calculating for bias, people are so bad at it that they act like, well, there's bias. People want us to think that the cops would hurt a, a little old man. So I'm going to subtract so much bias. It's not bias. I'm going to add my bias and twist it into another shape. And you can't blame that on, oh, I don't know what to believe. 
except for when people are coming from this dogmatic um, foundation, right? And just like a lot of the seminary people like Aaron Ra, if you know who he is, um, you know, become the atheist champion. And, and like I'm saying, they're, they're on a line. When you're getting free of that, uh, the remnants of it, when it's all broken up, is this arbitrariness. Like, yeah, I believe in this God or that God or this kind of a person is a hero or that situation. This uh, agent uh, was um, blameless and that agent uh, was blameful and this is what it's like to be a doctor and a nurse and who's one's a man and one's a woman and all of these biases were just arbitrary and as you give them up and you're trying to reform ideas you, you don't have good skeptical practice at just going to the primary information and so you just cobble stuff together for oh this feels right because you just gave up a bunch of ideas that felt really right not because they're right for you, but because you'd grown into them, right? And so the bottom line is it's not rocket surgery. You just go to the primary sources, uh, individual witnesses, as many of them as you can. And a thing like the 75-year-old man, yeah, it becomes really easy since some of those witnesses are cops that are there. Some of the witnesses are doctors where he's getting treated for an injury. The cops have that his phone, so um, it's not that difficult. The, what's going on isn't fully constrained, and you can always learn more about it. But it's just like when you see a police brutality, and they go, "Oh, well, someone was a criminal, or someone uh, made this kind of move." You know, the people handling the lions in the in the zoo don't get to just kill the lions and get new lions all the time. You know, their job is to be able to handle the, these kind of difficult situations. Now, within bounds, but within bounds, a 75-year-old man, that's outside whatever the bounds are. I mean, there might be a gray area for the bounds, but that's not the gray area. They could walk around him, or they're pissed at him. What do you get in front of a bunch of riot cops for? Well, they're really just regular beat cops in riot team mode. Arrest him. See how he likes it in the drunk tank overnight with all the other uh, protesters. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what he expected. That would normally be uh, the kind of thing that would happen at worst. Um, and more likely, they'd go around and try to go get some of the young people there they were aiming for or whatever. So if you just go back to primary information, you'll either figure out something truer to believe or you'll realize there's not enough primary information to have a concrete opinion. So um, let me explain in summary to new viewers. This video wasn't really about this poor guy that got pushed over. That was an example for about how we think and how thinking works.